Hey everybody, Mr. Lears here. Today we are going to talk about an awesome artist named Wolf Khan who does amazing things with uh, landscapes and colors and lights. And uh, I and then we're we're going to look at his artwork and then we're going to talk about uh, his artwork and then we're going to try and make artwork like him. Uh, today you have it. If you don't have it right now, maybe you can ask your parent for help. Uh, if you can ask them for those brown paper bags that they get at the grocery store, those grocery bags that are brown paper, uh, if you can go get one of those right now. And also chalk. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, you can use sidewalk chalk. I'm going to use art chalk. Um, and if you don't have those supplies, that's fine. Uh, you can use whatever colors you have and uh, whatever paper you have. It's whatever you like, okay? Uh, whatever you have, you can use, but you'll need paper and colors. I'm going to use the brown paper bag and chalk today, uh, if you have that. Like I said, you can even use sidewalk chalk, okay? Uh, so if you don't have that, go ahead and get that now. Let's uh, start uh, by talking uh, or looking at some artwork uh, by Wolf Khan, and then we'll talk about it right after this. Welcome to Llewellyn Galleries, located in Santa Fe's Historic Rail Yards Arts District. On exhibition now at the Llewellyn Galleries is the solo show of Wolf Kahn, that internationally famous artist who is noted for his light and color. This is an exceptional exhibition of the works of an exceptional artist and is definitely not a show to miss. Khan is an artist who embodies a rich synthesis of artistic traits, the modern abstract painting of colorist Hans Hoffmann, the vital and sensuous palette of Matisse, the sweeping bands of color of Mark Rothko, and the light-filled atmospheric qualities of American Impressionism. studied with and was the assistant to abstract expressionist Hans Hofmann, considered by many to be the most important American art instructor of the 20th century. While Hofmann's teachings were strongly influential, Kahn had more expansive ideas that incorporated and fused many other artistic concepts into something very specific, Kahn's light and color-filled vision of the universe. I think it's more difficult to find colors that clash than to find colors that go together, actually. Because in order to, to be responsive to, to clashing colors, you already have to have some kind of idea of harmonious color. We all are bound by conventions and, and very much by habit. And as artists, both of these are our, our enemies because you're not supposed to think conventionally and you're not supposed to be doing what you've already done before. The act of painting allows you to be indirect at the same time that you're doing something very direct. It's an indirect mode of arriving at the subconscious. I'm at the stage now where I want to be a landscape painter who doesn't describe anything. I mean, I'm not trying to paint the woods. I just use the idea of the woods as something that gets me going and gives me a, a sense of freedom. The more able you are to circumvent the conscious mind in order to have things happen that are unexpected, uh, the better off you are. And, and one of the modes to do that is through color. Wolf Kahn has long been considered to be a towering figure in American art history and is revered for his very personal and scintillating use of color, spontaneity, and representation that has produced a rich and expressive body of work. Okay, so let's talk about some of Wolf Kahn's 
uh, artwork. Let's take a look at this picture called Bold Color that he made in 2011. Um, let's start by talking about what you see. Who can unmute or maybe even type into the chat if you uh, feel more comfortable doing that? Who can tell me what are some of the things that you see in this picture right now? Anybody can unmute. Right, so we see, uh, we see tree trunks, we see leaves, and we uh, see colors and sky. Okay, those are all great answers. Everybody uh, did a great job uh, telling me what you see. Uh, let's look at, uh, let's think about some of all the different artworks that you saw in his art, in, in this video. What was the same? Who can unmute and tell me, or maybe write in the chat, who can unmute or tell me uh, what is the same about all of his artwork? Go ahead and unmute. So think about all the pictures that we saw of his. Maybe I can show you a couple of different ones. Here's another one. Here's another one. Okay, so what is the same about all of those? Good. Okay, so we'll just keep looking at this one. Um, if this was the cover, like if that picture right there that you can see, if this was the cover of a book, what do you think that book would be about? Just by looking at that picture. They say never judge a book by its cover. But that's what we're doing in art. Because we're looking at the artwork. Who can unmute and tell me? If this was a book, what do you think it would be about? Go ahead and unmute. Good. I, I, you know, if I, good, those are all good answers. If, if I were to um, think about what this book would be about, I would, I would say, well, first of all, it takes place in a forest, right? And there's something about the colors. So this might be about a very colorful forest. Because those colors aren't normal colors that you would see outside all the time, right? Maybe in the fall, we see more colors like this, but especially that one, right? With the yellow skies. And here are some orange tree trunks, right? Hey, okay, great. So if we are going to make an artwork like this, who can unmute and tell me what are some of the things that we're going to be making a picture of today? If we're going to make an artwork like Wolfcon. Go ahead and unmute. Or you can type it. Great. So, yeah, we're going to be making tree trunks. We might be making some leaves. Uh, and sky maybe and maybe the ground and grass and extraordinary colors colors that we don't normally see those were all great ideas so if you don't already have paper and colors ready don't forget you can get a, i think a brown paper bag and chalk would work great today as long as you're working on a surface that it's okay to uh, make chalk with and if you're using chalk get like a dry paper towel or an old rag that nobody wants anymore to uh, blend all the colors from the chalk. So we're not getting our fingers all dirty. So go ahead and get those now and get those ready because we're about to start. 
Okay, are we just about ready? Need a minute to get our stuff ready. Okay. Okay, so let's get ready to get started. Like I said, you can use white paper and whatever colors you have, that's fine. You can still use chalk on regular paper too. Uh, the, the paper bag might work a little bit better because it has more of a tooth or texture to it that the chalk uh, works really well with. So first, what we want to do is create a field of color. So just like Wolf Khan, we're going to pick three colors. We're going to make three bands of colors across our paper. So turn your paper sideways. So if you see that one, that one has three or four maybe five colors going across it, right? So we're gonna kind of do the same thing going across our paper. Okay, so I'm gonna start with like a light teal color and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go across the bottom of the paper. So the next color I'm going to use is like a magenta or purple. I'm going to go across the middle of my paper. And uh, for the top, I think um, I did like a fiery orange. I like my shirt. I'm going to go all the way across your paper. So go ahead and go all the way across your paper with that. And then take uh, your paper towel or rag and uh, sp spread it sideways, only sideways. Don't go up and down, okay? And it's okay if those colors blend together, but you have to keep going sideways. I think I'm, I'm going to add another strip of color right at the bottom. I'm going to blend that in as well. I think I like it uh, so much. I, I put a little bit towards the top or towards the middle. Okay, so go ahead. Okay, so go ahead and take a few minutes to add three or four colors across your paper. Go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to add some texture at the bottom of my paper. I'm going to use like a blue or a teal color for this artwork. So you have to think about them like trees, just vertical lines. Vertical lines go up and down, right? Some might be thicker, the bigger ones. So since they're bigger, they need to start lower on your paper. 
And the thin ones, you can start a little bit higher on the paper. Like the big one right here started down here and the thin one kind of started towards the middle. Don't worry about anything else, just worry about the tree trunks right now. And you can just fill your paper with vertical lines. The big ones, remember, need to go start at the bottom of your paper and the thin, smaller ones, you just start kind of in the middle of your paper and you can do as many as you want. Um, and towards the top, just let your uh, chalk or whatever color you're using go right off the top of your paper, okay? Don't worry about where you're putting the lines. You can just put them anywhere across your paper. Go ahead and start doing that now. Okay, so you put a couple of really thin ones, a little bit higher. And all of them go right off the top of the paper. Do you notice? Okay, so why don't you take a moment to go ahead and finish adding the vertical lines. Start, you know, big ones start at the bottom, the medium sized ones start in the middle and the really thin ones start a little bit higher. You go all the way up to the top of your paper. Go ahead and do that now, take a minute. You can use whatever colors you want. Dark color for the tree trunks. Not like black. Don't use black. Maybe like a blue or a purple. Brown. Brown is kind of a normal color, though. I think we're uh, like if we're making artwork like Wolf Con, we need to use colors that aren't normal. Maybe a green. Uh, you could use green for the tree trunks, like a dark green. Remember the picture we looked at? They had orange tree trunks. We can do like orange or red. I wouldn't use yellow, that might be too light. These are background colors we want to see uh, the tree trunks. Okay. Okay, so now uh, with that same color that you made the tree trunks, we're going to make a little bit diagonal or sideways lines. Not really big ones, but little ones that come off of the tree trunks. So you can go ahead and do that now. Okay, and that's okay if they run into each other. You know, put three or four branches on each tree trunk. They're just little ones. They don't have to be really big. It doesn't have to be fancy uh, branches. Just a couple of diagonal lines here and there for each tree trunk. Okay, so now. Okay, so why don't you take a uh, few minutes to uh, add uh, the branches towards the top of your tree trunks. Okay, go ahead and do that now. Okay, yep, same color, just a couple of branches going in both directions off of each tree trunk towards the top. Okay, not in the middle, towards the top. So we make them like wolf kind. 
Okay. So let's. Okay, so that's a simple tree landscape. So let's go back and add a couple more pops of color, just like Wolf Khan. So I'm gonna, you can take green like me and towards uh, the bottom, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, scribble scrabbles, right? Those are pretty easy to scribble. It doesn't matter, just kind of towards the bottom. Just a couple scribble scrabbles here and there. See, they kind of look like little wave lines. Maybe like a little bush here and there. Just a bunch of scribble scrabbles at the bottom. And then uh, I'm gonna go towards the top of the paper and add some highlights. Not sure what color. Maybe something lighter like uh, uh, teal or light blue. So I'm going uh, over the branches a little bit. A couple of the branches here and there. Give some highlights to the branches. If there's ever anything you don't like, you can always just blend it in with your rag and then color over it. That's what's cool about chalk. This is a kind of a cool project because you can do uh, more than one. Maybe each picture can be a different uh, season in the year. And maybe you can use like cardboard or brown paper bags or as long as it's okay with your parents, maybe sidewalk chalk. Maybe you can do one of these on the sidewalk outside when it gets nicer out, right? So just a couple of different loose branches that light. And then what I'm, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm putting one long vertical line right on the other vertical lines to give it some height too. You see that? Give it a little bit of three dimension by doing that, okay? So why don't you uh, take a minute or two to add the highlights, the highlight branches, so a brighter color that you can add a couple more branches on and uh, the long, one long vertical line on each of the tree trunks. Go ahead and do that now. So yeah, uh, the color should be uh, lighter than the other color that you use for your tree. So the highlight needs to be a lighter color. So I did a dark blue and a light blue. And just remember uh, the vertical tree trunk, we only put one little line of highlight. So go ahead and do that on your paper. Do that now. Don't forget the highlights branches.
Okay, so something else we can do is we can go back to the bottom and add low lights. So the opposite of highlights. And I'm taking like a dark blue, dark blue, and maybe mix that in a little bit at the bottom. And then don't forget to sign it. So that is a colorful tree landscape uh, inspired by Wolf Khan. Uh, so go ahead uh, and finish up coloring these. I hope you had fun learning about Wolf Khan and his artwork, and I hope you had fun uh, making your own tree landscape like Wolf Khan with all the extraordinary colors. And uh, I had fun doing that as well. Uh, I look forward to seeing these all finished. They don't have to be finished right now. You guys can show me uh, next week in class. Uh, I hope you uh, had fun and I want you to have a great week and I really, really look forward to seeing these done next time. Have a great day.